was trying to go landscape and it wouldn't let me go live unless I did portrait. So hopefully that's okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, this is my first time ever doing live stream on YouTube. So bear with me if it's a little, uh, haphazard. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to try to pull this up on my iPad so that I can read comments and stuff. Um, so let's, let's try it. There wasn't really a great way to like test this beforehand. So you're kind of getting the test right now. <laughs> All right. If you're watching, uh, can you let me know? Can you hear me? Okay. I've got my AirPods and I don't even know if these will work for this, but let me know if, if you can hear me. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna just get started tracing this pattern. This is a um, 50s pattern, vintage. Uh, it is Simplicity 4310. Got it on eBay, pretty sure. I just love that attitude. This one with the hat. <laughs> Sounds good? Awesome, thank you. All right, so I'm going to be tracing this pattern and I am going to do a full bust adjustment because the bust is 34 and that's about what my upper bust is and my full bust though is more like 30. Actually, you know what, I should probably measure but that's okay. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, probably about 38, 37 and a half, 38. I don't know. My measurements have been changing a little bit, so. But regardless, I have to trace it just at the regular 34 size anyway um, before I can do my adjustments. So, first time I'm ever opening this pattern up. It's like it's factory folded. I'm also going to be tracing, so I'm not going to do the skirt, I'm just going to do the the shirt, the shorts, and the little bra top. Um, I might do, yeah, I'm not going to do the skirt, it's, it's basically just a, a circle skirt, and I don't really need to trace that, so that's fine. Um, yeah. So, I was talking to my friend Fawn on, in my Facebook group, and she was asking if I had any plans for a sew along for the summer, and I was like, well, I didn't have any, but would you be interested in one? And she said, yes, she wants to do like a summer um, sort of set like this and actually this is already in my plan so it's kind of perfect granted this is a vintage pattern so you know it's it's harder to come by than your run-of-the-mill reproductions or you know like a gertie pattern or something but um i think people could just do whatever pattern they wanted to if you wanted to do so long you know um it could be more about the theme than the pattern itself. And then we could kind of help each other out if we needed any help. So, so this is the front of the shirt, it looks like, with the little tie front here. And the thing about this shirt is that, well, it's super cute. It's got like, you know, the tie, like I said, um, but it doesn't actually button. And, Part of me wants to kind of alter it so that it actually has buttons and the tie because I really would love to be able to wear this as, you know, an actual shirt and not with my midriff exposed if I didn't have to. Um, let me show you the fabric that I am going to be using for this pattern. It's right behind you, actually. Oi, did you hear that? My hip just popped. <laughs> 
Okay, it's this beautiful um, rayon cotton, I believe, blend from Robert Kaufman. And I actually got this from Minerva. Um, and this is part of the Minerva brand ambassador program. So I will be making the set out of this. I'm gonna be making a little tie shirt, the shorts, and the little bra top if I have enough. And then I'm also going to be doing another pair of the shorts. And I don't know yet what I'm gonna do about, basically my idea is to have like a little summer capsule. So I'm gonna have some pieces that kind of intermingle amongst each other. <laughs> and I do wanna have a skirt to go with the set, but I'm not gonna do this full circle skirt. I'm gonna do a different one that I've been meaning to make actually for my capsule for a while, I think, if the fabric matches enough. I'm not sure yet. But that is the fabric I'm going to be using for sure for the top and the shorts. So I love this. I've had my eye on this fabric for a while. <laughs> I finally got to get them, yay. And um, let's see. All right, so I'm going to do that piece. I need, what is this? Okay, shirt and sleeve back. Oh, interesting. So it actually has three darts on the, um, the elbow there. Hmm. That's interesting. I didn't notice that actually before. I've never seen that in a modern pattern. The vintage patterns, I just, I love working with them because they're so, they have so many different details that the modern ones don't typically have. So this is a skirt, so I'm not gonna unfold that. So what, what are you all working on? Are you sewing right now? Are you, what are you working on? I feel like I have been kind of in a rut a little bit with sewing lately, actually. <laughs> I, I think I put too much pressure on myself with YouTube and um, my husband's like, you know, you should just do some lives, like do, do some lives and like, you know what, you're right. So I'm going to be doing some lives kind of as I go through this process of making these pieces and I will do kind of a recap video at the end, but I'm trying to change up the format a little bit because I think my videos before were just, they were hard to sustain at that level of detail. Um, they just take so long to make. But anyway, all right, so this is the skirt waistband, just the skirt waistband? Or is this also the shorts waistband? Nope, it's two different pieces. Well, okay. <laughs> Um, let's see here. I wish I could get some music on here, but I don't want to get like a talking to by YouTube or something. <laughs> um, all right. So skirt front, uh, sorry, shirt front facing. Makes sense. I'm going to set that aside as well. And then this, I'm guessing a little bra top maybe. Actually, I feel like my allergies, this paper is making my nose like <laughs> tingle. Okay, so this is a skirt pocket. I don't need this. Are you, are you all tracers, team trace or team cut? Go ahead, don't be shy. Write it in the comments. <laughs> I will not go back to, to cutting. I mean, these are a little bit different because they are all one size, even though I would, I don't think I would ever cut a vintage, a true vintage pattern. That's just sacrilegious to me, but I could, I could see a little bit more cutting the seam, you know, the, the excess off here and using each piece because it is one size, but the the reproduction ones with the multi sizes 
I will never go back to cutting those. I will always trace, even though I hate tracing. <laughs> it's so annoying. Um, okay, so this is bra front. I do want this. I'm going to put that there. And what is this? This is a lot of pieces, actually. Bra band. After just getting into tracing, I'm going back to team cut. No! <laughs> Uh, I know it, it takes so long it's it's really quite annoying to trace but for me I've just luckily I didn't cut a whole lot of patterns before I really started getting into sewing and I learned about tracing because there's some patterns that I've had to rebuy or will have to rebuy because I cut them and that's such a bummer so I get it but I am just too cheap to, to do that. <laughs> um, okay, this is the other bra strap. So I guess there's a front and back maybe for the bra straps. Hmm. Okay, and then we've also got shorts casing. So the shorts have a cute little um, drawstring detail right there. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do that or not. I think it's super cute, but I don't know. I, I'm on the fence. What do you think? Drawstring or no drawstring? I feel like the drawstring is definitely a look, but without the drawstring, it's a little bit more wearable day to day. I don't know. I'm probably not gonna do the drawstring for this pair. I will definitely try it at some point. Um, bra back like that. And shirt collar, I want that. I think all these, the rest of these I want to use. So shirt back facing, yep. Short front, shorts front. Um, the shorts fitting is going to be interesting. Shorts back. So let's not get ahead of ourselves though. <laughs> I think I'll just trace these and then I will be doing, I'll probably do another live stream where I adjust the fit for the shorts um, and do a few fittings because it's, I anticipate having to do a few different versions, but who knows? Maybe it'll surprise me. Actually, I'm not 100% sure what, see what size this is supposed to be for the hip. Um, okay, so this is a size 16, which is the hip, it expects you to have 37 inch hips. So mine are more like 39, plus maybe 39 and a half. So if you have, okay, any advice? Usually cut patterns, but recently bought a 70s pattern that actually requires tracing. It's like one large sheet of paper. So there's the pattern on the front and back with instructions. So if you have any advice on tracing materials. Yes. Um, so I like to use this big old roll of tracing paper and actually, it's not really marketed as just tracing paper. It is um, for architecture drawing. And I don't know what the brand is because I buy it from an art supply store. Maybe this isn't helpful. Um, <laughs> I know that lots of people use different materials. Um, I know some people use like the paper, you know, when you go to the doctor's office and they have the paper on the at least in the US, they have the paper on the little um, bed that you sit on or whatever it is. People use that. I know other people use um, actual rolls of tracing paper. I know some people use wrapping paper. I like this stuff. It's cheap, there's a lot of it. I think if you just searched architectural tracing paper roll, this is, I think, 36 inches. 
and I don't even know how many yards, but it's, there's a lot of it. And um, I think I buy about one of these per year, so it lasts me a pretty long time. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Make what works best for you, so to do, wear it. Make what works best for you. So you wear it? Yeah, I yeah, I agree. Right. You gotta you gotta factor in the wear wearability for your projects hundred percent. Um okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna trace the small pieces because of course I don't have my scissors with me. They're somewhere around here. This house, I'm telling you, is <laughs> It is so messy. I'm surprised my husband doesn't get on me more because it is, it's really cluttery. I feel bad. Um, okay, actually, you know what? I don't even need to move at this moment. I can just trace, it's fine. So in terms of uh, tracing utensils, I like to use this very, let's see. It's, uh, the brand is, um, Alvin Draftmatic Mechanical Pencil 0.7 millimeter lead and I just I like to use this because it's nice and fine and I don't have to sharpen it I can just you know and then I also use a big eraser if I need to erase anything and I'm really not like that precise about it. If I, if I have, so say I have, you know, something with a long straight line, I will usually butt that against the side of the paper and then use that so I don't have to worry about tracing a really straight line. Um, I do usually have a ruler, I think. One around here somewhere. Um, I brought it into the other room, but it's fine. I, I'm really not that fussy about, you know, making sure it's perfect. I just kind of, I mean, I'm not messy with it, but you know, it's, I'm not, I'm not concerned about it being absolutely perfect at the same time. So let me see if I can move the camera a little bit so you can kind of see a little bit better. Sorry, you're getting kind of a view maybe you don't want. <laughs> um, Okay, it's gonna wiggle for a second, sorry. All right. And again, this is the first time I'm ever streaming live. If this, if people want this more, I will invest in some equipment to do a better setup. Um, but you know, if, if nobody wants it, I didn't wanna invest in that just yet. Um, but if you guys are actually interested, then I will do so. So anyway. So yeah, this paper, you know, it's, you can definitely see through it, which is nice. Um, you can see all the information there. And so I'll just usually try to, try to make the best use of my paper as possible. So if I have a whole bunch of small pieces, I'll kind of try to like puzzle them out or I'll, I'll do larger pieces first typically. But if I have a piece like this, like, cause this is attached to the roll still. I tend to leave pieces if there's extra because I know that there's going to be small pieces for whatever project I'm working on and I don't want to waste the paper so I don't rip it off and start clean every time, you know. So for this, I really, really should be using a ruler, but whatever. All right, and then you've got to remember that when you, when you trace, especially these older patterns, they have a thicker outline there and you want to include that outline you know trace around the edge of the outline not on the inside or in the middle because that's almost that's almost an eighth of an inch there and that can be a huge difference so you want to make sure you include that thicker outline and i usually always unless I forget, I always write down, well, you, you want to absolutely make sure you put down the grain accurately. And I typically will 
I'll try to use a ruler for that because that is pretty important to have the grain straight. And I'll also write down the size. And if I made an adjustment to the size, then I will write, you know, what the finished garment measurement sh should be. Um, and of course, all the markings shifted. And I do sometimes use, I will use pattern weights for tracing, not always. It just depends, like I should have used one for this because it's, because people are watching me <laughs> oh you know what I should post this to my Facebook group ah, okay well that's annoying all right um okay Give me like two seconds. I'm gonna go run and grab my scissors and a ruler and I will be right back, okay? <laughs> Actually, you can probably see it. still hear me talking, so I will still talk to you while I do this. Um, all right. Oh, I do try to use, um, I do try to use a, you know, long-ish ruler. I have a few different sizes of rulers. Um, I didn't buy them for sewing. I bought them for, um, drawing class and, you know, just drawing in general. So it is really nice to have a couple different sizes though, because if you're working with small stuff, it's kind of annoying to try to maneuver the large ruler. And if you have a piece with like a long edge, you don't want to have to be trying to like match up, you know, move the ruler along the edge and, and try to make sure it was straight. So the longer ruler, basically <laughs> it depends on what you're actually marking, but it is helpful to have both, though not absolutely necessary. Okay, <clears throat> so let's try to fix this here. It's much faster with the ruler as well. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna freaking retrace this. Who cares? All right, and I'm going to use. Uh, I don't have any pattern weights here. I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors to hold this down for now. All right, and again, make sure that you are including the whole line, whole outline of this pattern piece. And um, yeah, I forgot to mention too, for the pieces, um, the information, I always make sure I trace the piece number and the the pattern name itself. I don't remember if I said that or not, but because I have <laughs> found quite a number of loose pattern pieces hanging around my sewing area and been like, what is this from? And that's always annoying. And I really do try to be good about writing down, you know, the, the information, but sometimes I forget. So don't forget to do that because it really makes your life easier. Okay. So I'm just going to mark this circle here. And then I think, what is this? Seeing around it's 5 eighths of an inch. Yep. Okay. So This is the short casing. I Even though I'm not gonna use this right now, I am gonna trace it because I will use it at some point, I'm sure. And I've gotten into this habit now of tracing 
pretty much every piece from a pattern, unless I really hate the, the view, I trace every piece and it takes a long time. But at least I don't, you know, pull the pattern out, trace one view of it, and then be like, oh, I don't, you know, I'm only gonna make this right now. I don't need to worry about the other pieces. And then <laughs> decide a few months later, you know, I really wanna make the view B on that pattern. And then I'm like, oh, I have to get it out and trace it again. You know, it just, it's so not worth <laughs> that. The extra time up front is worth the annoyance of tracing, uh, you know, both up front, essentially, whatever. So, all right, this is piece H. It's kind of funny how they went from, <laughs> they went from alphabet pieces to number pieces. Um, all right, so shorts casing. Shorts casing, simplicity, I just do S, 43, 10, size 16. Um, these will be changed, probably. The size of the shorts probably will be altered. Um, but I don't think the casing is really going to change, so I'm just going to write size 16. I, I can't imagine it changing much. It's it's literally just on the seam here. It's not really fitted. Um, so that's that piece. Woo, one piece done. <laughs> of course, when I'm not chattering away, it, I am a little bit faster with the tracing. So I try to always to um, make sure that I keep the pieces that I already traced separated from the ones that I need to trace still. Um, and then sometimes if I have like a really complicated pattern, a pattern with a lot of pieces, like I'm, I've got a robe pattern around here somewhere. I'm going to be doing a robe, hopefully in the near future. Um, it had like 24 different pieces. So I actually did have like a little scrap paper and I wrote, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. And then I checked it off as I went because there were so many pieces so many huge pattern, you know, tissues. I didn't want to miss anything. Fold it up and then have to unfold and search for it. Ugh, that's, it's really annoying. So that's, that's helpful if you have a lot of pieces. Okay. All right, here's another little piece, shirt back facing. So, hello from Ottawa slash Bytown, Kathy. Hello, Kathy from Ottawa. How are you this evening or afternoon? I'm not sure where Ottawa is. I know it's in Canada, but I don't remember which coast it's on or if it's on a coast. I am just tracing out for anybody who is joining, tracing out a little tie shirt there and the shorts and the little bra top. I am not going to be t uh, tracing the circle skirt because it's kind of a waste of time to do that. I can just draft a circle skirt. Um, okay. So I know some people use French curves when they trace curves but I am much too lazy for that. So I don't. <laughs> I do have an arts background, um, fine arts, drawing, painting, mostly drawing and painting. I have done some sculpture, not really photography, that's, that's one art form I never was trained in actually. All the photography that I do of my projects and stuff and, and videography has really just been self-taught um, and the internet. <laughs> but 
Yeah, so I guess I kind of just figure like, oh, I can just draw the curve clean enough. And if I need to kind of clean it up a little bit with the eraser, I can do that. I'm just not really concerned about it being super neat as long as it's accurate. I guess you could kind of argue that it should be pretty, uh, pretty neat to be accurate, but oh well, I haven't really had a problem so far, so. Okay, and you know the other interesting thing about these vintage patterns is they would mark the darts, um, like the number of the darts actually. So I'll show you when I'm done with this piece, but so like this little set of, uh, not darts. What the heck are these things called? Um, the, the markings, the, the pattern markings, the little, little diamonds there, notches. Sheesh, the notches. They would mark the notches with numbers. So this one is 20. This one is 24. And you know, it's a little overkill, but I gotta say, sometimes when I'm working on a modern pattern, and I'm like, what the heck? And then like trying to, you know, compare what I'm looking at to like the little picture. And it would be kind of nice to have the notches numbered. <laughs> All right, so this is P. Piece, piece. Simplicity, 43, 10, size 16. I'm gonna write 16 on this because, um, so basically for the shirt, I'm going to be making the shoulders in size 16, the 34, because my upper bust is about 34. Um, so I know that if I make this part and this part to fit me, it'd be fine. I just need to do the full bust adjustment. So basically the, the collar pieces, the shoulders will be size 16. So I'm not going to make any note of different sizing for this piece since it's the collar and it will be 16. If that makes sense. Okay, so let's see, make sure I haven't missed anything. Shirt back facing. And I do, I don't remember if I said this, but I do write, you know, like shirt back facing. Okay, center back seam. Center back. Um, <laughs> Okay, I think we are good. Let me make sure. Oh, almost missed my notch marking on that one. Okay, so this piece of paper is pretty much at capacity. So I'm just gonna put it aside. I'm not gonna bother cutting it out right now. I'm gonna keep tracing and then I will cut more stuff out when I have more to cut. It's helpful to kind of do it in an assembly line kind of situation if you can. Um, so, you know, trace as much stuff out first as you can and then cut. So you're not tracing and then cutting and then tracing and then cutting, etc. It's faster to do kind of batch processes. So, all right, this piece I'm gonna put to the side because I'm done with that. Um, next up we have, do I want to do this one next? I think I'm going to do, do the shorts back next because this piece is kind of, kind of a weird shape and it kind of looks like that shorts shape a little bit to me. So I really try to make use of the paper as much as I can. I'll try not to waste too much paper. It's kind of inevitable, but you can, you can help it a little bit. Yeah, see, that's like perfect. All right, 
So, yeah, so, uh, so what's everybody up to? Are you like working on stuff or just hanging out? What are you, what are you up to? I always feel like, you know, if, I get it, you know, if you're working on projects and stuff, you're kind of just listening, you're not really able to type so much. Um, but sometimes I feel a little silly, like <laughs> chattering away and like not really talking to anyone. Um, okay, so Ellie, I forgot you're also an artist. I love that video where you do your capsule wardrobe. I'm applying to art school this year and I'm kind of nervous. Aw, what kind of art are you hoping to do? I really wanted to go to art school myself. But my parents were like, you can go to art school, but you got to figure out how to pay for it. And I was like, I don't really want to pay for that. So, so I went to a public school and actually it was a great decision for me. Um, Steve, I'm just making some dinner and keeping up with what you're up to. Oh, oh, that's Kathy actually. Take that back. <laughs> I remember you guys share your uh, YouTube account, um, or you kind of watch on his on accident. <laughs> um, yes, uh, so so art school, yeah, you know, basically my parents were like, you can do it if you can pay for it. Um, and I decided, you know what, mm, no. And the school I went to um, was, you know, very affordable wasn't as glamorous as some of the other art schools, but I ended up having a really good time and I think it was a really good decision for me personally to go to a state school and um, the art program was really good. We had a really good drawing program at my school and I didn't go for drawing, but drawing, having a good grasp on drawing is very, Oh, hey, Fawn. Um, oh, hi, Erin. <laughs> Fold and laundry and cleaning my office slash laundry room. If it isn't clean, I hate being in here. Girl, I feel you on that one. I ugh, I feel the same way. I'm just so freaking lazy. <laughs> uh, I have a lot going on. I'm not lazy. I just I have a lot going on, and then I get kind of burnt out, and then I don't do anything. It's a little different, I guess, but yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, Ellie, I don't know, um, oh, you said, okay, right now I'm into sculpture and painting, but I'm not sure of like an exact thing to study yet. Okay, well, you know, I don't know what your situation is, but, um, if you're in the U.S. and you know, if you're thinking that you kind of need to go to, to art school to be an artist versus, you know, a different kind of school, you don't have to. <laughs> like, it's a really cool thing to do. And, you know, if that's what you want to do and that works out for you personally, then that's awesome. But you definitely don't have to go to, you know, formal art school or just a school dedicated to art. Um, to get a really good art education. And, you know, so I have the art background, but I am a graphic designer. And, you know, partly because I, I know myself and even when I was, you know, teenager, I was like, you know what? There's no way I, I could just be an artist and do my own art and have that be sustainable for myself. I found the idea of that very, not boring, but just, I needed like a prompt, like a, some kind of, I don't know. Like for me, you know, graphic design was a really good choice because I'm given assignments and I do them. <laughs> I mean, I make my own art too, but I, the, the thought of, constantly figuring out my own art to do was kind of like 
not appealing to me. So that's why I went into graphic design. I actually, originally I wanted to do animation and I wanted to learn like 3D animation and I wanted to actually work on video games. But I found out that uh, typically if you're good, if you're, if you're gonna do animation, then you kind of just have one thing you're good at. This is what I was told by someone who did a portfolio review with me, like when I was a senior in high school. You know, if you do animation, you're gonna kind of do one thing and that's what you're gonna do all the time. And I was like, never mind, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> that sounded incredibly boring to me. I need variety. I, you know, I need a lot of, I need a lot of stuff to kind of keep it fresh. Okay, so Fawn says, I'm a professional painter at Chapman University, lead painter tech too, and I didn't go to school for it. I thought going to school for art would be pointless when I graduated from high school. Oh, and you're also finally selling your Gertie picnic set. Nice. Yeah, I mean, you don't, <clears throat> it really just depends like what you want to do and how formal your education needs to be. Like I know, you know, corporations these days, if you want to work for a company, you're going to probably have to have some kind of degree. Um, but you certainly don't. It's, it's like a formality, you know. You really don't have to have the degree. It's definitely more about the experience, but it is a good, a good base. Like, I feel like I learned a lot in college and you know, college really for me was very, um, <laughs> it really opened my, my eyes to, you know, a larger world out there, which I know sounds so silly, but you know, I, I grew up moving around the country. My dad is in the Navy and, um, I, I was kind of, I mean, my parents were kind of strict and, um, you know, I would have to move so much that like when I would move to a new place, I would get there and I was shy. And I mentioned, I've mentioned this in, um, my, my video about the mental health books. Um, you know, I was so shy that I would move to a new place and then I would like it would be a struggle to make friends. And then it was like, finally, as I was making friends, we would be moving again. And so I kind of like put these walls up to people and, um, you know, I, I just wasn't really that open-minded. I was afraid of getting hurt by people. And I don't know, it's also a freaking teenager, you know, teenagers aren't the brightest people in the world usually. <laughs> and that's okay. They don't have to be, they're teenagers. <laughs> But anyway, all I'm saying is that college for me was a very, a very good experience. And I know there's a lot of people nowadays that are like, college is a scam. And like, you know, I, I understand where that mindset comes from, but I do think it's, it's a very valuable experience and you can balance it to where you're not, you know, breaking the bank. But anyway, <laughs> Let's see here. Um, okay. Oh, you were wrong. I see. I had to learn everything firsthand. Sophia got my second shot yesterday. So arm sore and tired laying low watching you. Oh, sorry. Your arm hurts, but congrats on getting your second vaccine. I am going to be getting mine um, on May 4th. And for any Star Wars fans out there, may the fourth be with you. <laughs> I, I would say I'm like a baby Star Wars fan. It's funny, I really did not get the whole Star Wars thing until like, I would say very recently. <laughs> um, I don't know, I don't know what it was. Like I had seen the Star Wars movies, but like they just didn't really grab me that much. And then my husband and I watched, um, which one was it? I don't know, it was like the first one. I, I realized I had never seen the first Star Wars. I saw, well, I saw like scenes from it, but I never saw the whole movie. And he's like, all right, well, we're watching it. And I'm like, okay. 
<laughs> I'll watch it. And and I was like, this is actually really good. And um, and it, a lot of it made more sense. Imagine that. <laughs> Star Wars is awesome. Oh, I wasn't sure what I wanted to be when I graduated Surrey a decade later, and I finally know I want to be a librarian. Ooh, interesting. I love libraries. I cannot wait to go back to the library. I got a library card when we moved to Orlando and I actually never even freaking went, but the Orlando library is phenomenal. They have so much, so much, I mean, so many books, obviously, but um, in terms of like learning and stuff, like classes for all kinds of media, they actually have sewing classes there, which is really cool. They have like a whole sewing studio. Um, but yeah, back to Star Wars. Yeah, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I'm a late bloomer, I guess. It took me a really long time to like get it, but I feel like finally I, I get it now. Um, and you know, I'm not a fanatic, but I, I, I do like it. I really like it now. Um, I don't know. I don't really have a favorite movie, I don't think. I just kind of, I don't know. I did really like that one, um, and see, okay, so I really don't know the names, <laughs> like any of them, but the one where it was like the the chick was, the main character was a, a chick, and she, uh, it was like a rebel type thing. Rebel One, is that, is that it? I don't know, but that was really good, really sad, <laughs> but... But that one was, I really connected with that one. Um, I did really like the, the one with Ray. Um, I know there's been a few, but the one with her and uh, Ben, um, what's his face? Kylo Ren. I liked that one. I don't know. I know a lot of the hardcore fans are like, they don't really like the newer ones. Um, and like, I get that, but... I guess because I just, I don't really have that much of a, you know, a, a super strong connection with any of them. I'm not like, these suck. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, cool, you know, stuff happening. <laughs> Lasers and shit. Oh, I'm, I guess, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. I guess I am. Don't tell YouTube. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna make sure I don't forget to do the lengthen and shorten line on this because I, I'm I'm five five, so I'm not really tall, but I'm not really short either. Also, <laughs> but I have um, I'm short waisted, so my waist rogue one, the one with the chick, huh? <laughs> is it? I don't know. <laughs> Um, it, it's not Ray. it's, it's this other girl, and she was, I think she was only in one of the movies, but anyway, my ignorance is showing. Uh, yeah, so short-waisted, um, it basically means your waist is higher up, uh, proportionally, so your hips are, like, longer, I guess, or taller, so, um, and you know what? I freaking got bleach on my shorts. Oh, these are like some of my favorite shorts. I wear them all the time. And I was cleaning the bathroom. This was a few weeks ago and I bleached the, the sink, which I usually don't ever do that. And I, I was so sad. I freaking got bleach on these. So I think I was trying to get creative with some solutions. Um, I mean, I could do some patches, but I was actually thinking I might try painting like with some acrylic paint and just kind of coloring in like the kind of grayish and then the darker, um, <laughs> the navy, I don't know. Could be a good experiment. Um, anyway, wow, my ADHD is just really going right now, so. <laughs> 
short waistedness. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, my waist is here and my, my crotch is here and depending on how high your waist is, you might have to add more. And also, you know, your booty can lengthen that too. So if you've got a wedgie, you should probably add length. All right. So, okay. Let me, <laughs> let me back up just a little bit. So there's this lady on Instagram. Um, her name is Ruth and her Instagram handle is Ithaca Maven. And she has a very interesting, very detailed, um, what do you want to call it? Series, I guess, on pants fitting. And I have sewn a number of pairs of pants at this point, but I really haven't used a whole lot of patterns. And actually, hold on one second. I gotta blow my nose. <laughs> my allergies are absolutely awful right now. The pollen, I, I'm telling you, I have a black car and it's like yellow. It's so pollen-y. All right. Thank you for holding. Okay, so she has this really detailed series on pants fitting. And I was thinking I was going to try to use her techniques for these shorts um, if they need to be adjusted. But the way she kind of has proposed to go about pants fitting is to first fit the waistband. And I'm thinking this applies to shorts as well. It's a little bit different because the, um, <laughs> it's a little bit different because you don't have the same weight as you do with pants or trousers, um, as you do, you know, with shorts or you don't have it with shorts as you do with trousers. So that, that can kind of affect the drape and things, but I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to try her principle. So I see that, uh, Erin <laughs> said, on the Great British Sewing Bee, they call it a hungry bum when your pants ride up into the crack. <laughs> yep, hungry, 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 hungry bum. <laughs> I was going to say, hungry, hungry hippos. Oh my god, I loved that game when I was a kid. Um, yeah, we, I don't want a hungry, hungry bum situation. Um, so I'm going to have to... I'm anticipating having to lengthen the rise. It's called the rise um, from your crotch point to your waist point. I'm anticipating I'm gonna have to lengthen that because typically I have had to. Actually, however, I will say with, um, with the vintage patterns, I haven't had as much issues with that. Probably because so often the crotch was dropped so much because of just style purposes. Um, you know, if you look at the 40s trousers, they really were, I mean, they were so used to wearing skirts. They they didn't really wear pants or shorts uh, or trousers a whole lot before, before the 40s. So they were trying to be, you know, not... Um, they weren't trying to show off their goods. <laughs> so the, the crotch was so dropped. Um, so I haven't really had a whole lot of like wedgie action with actual vintage patterns. Not that I've used a whole bunch, but with the modern ones, yeah, I have to add a lot. And actually, so in her series, Ruth was talking about how so many people will scoop the crotch it's called um so you know if you have a wedgie rather than lengthening this a lot of people and i have done it too will scoop out fabric here scoop the crotch <laughs> um and you can run into problems with that you know it it can be a solution but you're lengthening it. You you are lengthening the seam here, but depending on the grain and stuff, it can cause more problems and it can cause different fit issues than if you were to just actually lengthen the entire uh, the entire rise essentially. And she was talking about how important it is to maintain 
this curve here because once you start scooping it just the curve is so different so I was gonna kind of treat this as a little experiment with that and I'm thinking about making well I definitely want to make another pants uh, trousers fitting tutorial um, because my Simplicity 8447s I didn't really go too much into detail with the fit of those. I think mostly because I was really afraid that it wasn't gonna really turn out, even though I did a, a muslin. Um, and I just felt like I am in no position to be telling anyone like how to fit these things. But I feel like now I, I have more experience and I probably could be more helpful than I was at the time. That was like three years ago, that, that video. Um, and actually, it's still my number one YouTube video, which is pretty crazy. But there needs to be some more pants, trousers content out there. So I'm going to be doing, I'm definitely going to be doing like a dedicated shorts video, um, probably for these and another pants video. And I think I'm going to do a reproduction for the pants video, trousers. Sorry, I know pants isn't proper for a lot of places in the world <laughs> but anyway so all right i cannot forget to write my pattern information on here so i've got oh one and a half inch hem allowance I'm trying to like write almost oh gosh backwards here Looks like kid writing. Okay. Um, green, I got that. Yes. And 13. Okay. All right. So this is shorts back. Piece F and simplicity. 4310 and I am going to write size 16 on here because I haven't made any adjustments to this yet. But once I make my adjustments, I will write, you know, I'll write something else on um the adjusted pattern pieces. So I'll say, you know, depending on how much I've changed it. Sometimes like if the waist still fits, I'll say 16 and then do an arrow like so size 16 going down to 18 or if I really have just gone off the rails with the fitting I'll do you know 16 or I'll just even use my just finished measurements so and sometimes I'll actually write you know I was you know 28 inches waist when I made this and 41 inch hips when I made this um just to kind of give myself a little bit of reference because sometimes it can be kind of hard to look back and be like, what was I trying to say here? Or, or you know, like I, I drafted it to fit this, but like what, what were my measurements? Um, you know, how, how did the measurements correspond with my body? You know, so um, it's helpful to have notes like that. All right, so that's done. And I'm just, I'm actually gonna cut this piece. I'm gonna cut these shorts off of here. All right, so I am almost at an hour. I'm thinking I'm gonna wrap it up for now. I'm gonna finish tracing all these pieces. And then the next live, I think, I will be, I think I'll do my, my full bust adjustment live. Um, so I'll have my pieces traced out just the size 16 and then I'll show you how I do an adjustment for that. How does that sound? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say that that's good. All right, um, if you enjoyed, let me know and um, good luck and I will, See you guys next time. I don't know what which, which day I'm gonna stream yet. Um, actually, probably Tuesday because my husband works on Tuesdays. Um, 
so he won't be here and I won't feel like shy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so probably Tuesday. I don't know what time yet, but I'll try to post too. So anyway, all right. Um, how do I end this thing? That's, that's the other thing. Bye.